So today we're gonna to talk about joint lockers, a 3D printed product that is sold out at Urban Outfitters four times. So the original joint locker was made by a designer named Cash, who designed it to be an easy way to store both a lighter and a joint in an easy to carry package that could be put in a pocket or a purse. Basically a really nifty stoner accessory. The design was eventually purchased by another room who reached out to Slant3D to mass produce these because 3D printing gave them the flexibility that they needed both in colors, design functionality long term, and then overall design control as they wanted to evolve the product and change it as time went by. But it actually ended up turning out that there were more benefits to 3D printing than just the design flexibility that actually enabled them to have a functionality that would have otherwise never been possible. So when another room reached out to us, they gave us the baseline design for the joint locker. And while that baseline design was actually quite excellent, there were a number of issues that came up with it that made it difficult to mass produce, which they wanted to do. So when we first got the joint locker, the very first things we started doing was kind of establishing a set of standards with another room. What was this allowed to be? Initially, it was generic 3D printed process, but that turned out to be too loose for a product like this and we ended up creating a QC document and an overall set of standards, which was basically, this had to be perfect every single time. There could not be any feature that was misplaced, no hair askew, no layer line protruding further than any other. So this makes it very difficult to mass produce because it's very unforgiving in that regard. But the very first step that we did was to eliminate the challenges with the bottom layer. We talk about this in other videos, but the bottom we ended up creating a cavity inside of so that it has minimal contact with the bed, which eliminates the chances of staining as well as any sort of layer mismashing or anything along those lines that can cause the bottom to go wrong, which was actually an issue in early batches. But then after that, we ended up readjusting the overall size of it, some of the dimensions, and then we ended up getting to the actual lighter socket itself. In order to get that handsome little pop, which was actually a design requirement of the product in order to make sure that the user experience was really good, we had to do something with this hole. Now, the original design of the joint locker was designed with just a few core machines producing it. When you have just a few machines, it is easier to tune the actual design so that everyone comes off and fits a lighter fine. But actually what turned out to have occurred was that due to the variances and tolerances of the different molds used to produce these things at scale, not every Bic lighter is actually the same size. Therefore, if you wanna create an accessory that it presses together with through an interference fit, you are not able to rely on any sort of datum feature from these because they will vary based on the company molding them and it will also vary based on whether this lighter is full or empty. Those will both change how tightly it fits into a standard hole. That was untenable because we ended up producing actually a batch of the parts and realizing that lighters on one end of delivery would not fit into them even though they were verified on our end that they actually did fit inside of them. And we ended up tracing it to injection molded lighters which did not have a high enough tolerance. So what we ended up needing to do was change these holes and create enough compliance in it so that it could fit the variance of the Bic lighters because having a solid bored out hole would not be a viable option in order to maintain both that pop but also a relaxed fit because if the Bic lighter was brand new, it would fit in there too tightly. And if we made it sized to that full lighter, then once the lighter emptied out, then it would start to be able to fall out, which wasn't a viable option either. Fortunately, we have actually done this before and we were able to implement grip fins into this part, which would actually not have been possible with any other sort of traditional manufacturing. If we had been using injection molding to produce this part, it could have never been produced because an injection mold would have only been able to make a cavity and would not have been able to accommodate the breadth of variances in Bic lighters as they insert into there. So 3D printing allowed us to create a reasonably complex internal geometry with flexible features that are able to pinch the lighter when it goes inside while still maintaining a reasonably tight fit around the top so you don't really notice but you still have a nice light pullout of one to two pounds exactly, that is the spec, so that it is comfortable and easy to pull out and work with, has a satisfying pop, and is actually able to deal with the variants of the injection molded lighters themselves. This is actually one of the primary innovations within the joint locker, which allows it to be 3D printed and have a capability that would have never been possible before. From there, we ended up optimizing everything else. And actually, this part ends up requiring print settings that are so specific almost to the color. 
If you vary the colors of the part, if you go from orange to pink, you have completely changed the dynamics of the model. The colorant inside of the material itself changes the properties of the material. So if we had created slicing settings, for producing this particular joint locker with this particular color, they would not necessarily work with this color. Now, while we could create a recipe for every single color, in order to get to large scale, you do not want that much variation. You don't wanna to have to create a special recipe for each type of color in every situation and so on and so forth. It creates complexity and introduces the opportunity for failure and screw ups. So what we had to do was make a robust set of slicing settings that were universal across the set of profiles but also matched with the CAD itself, the design specs of the part itself to where it didn't have any sort of visible problems at all ever. And while it could look 3D printed, it couldn't look that 3D printed. And we were not allowed to use options like textures. We were not allowed to add light draft angles and that kind of thing. This was a very strictly designed part. And because of how tightly packed it was, there was not a lot of room or margin to move around within the thin walls. So we ended up iterating through almost 100 different iterations for this single part in order to get to a production file that was stable, reliable, and worked across multiple colors. And it is important to note how much colorant can make a difference. Lighter colors of all types generally tend to have a lot of titanium dioxide in them, which is what is used to create white. So light colors tend to be a little bit more like toothpaste. We actually have a whole video discussing this from a little while back. Darker colors or more deeper hued colors have less titanium dioxide, so they actually tend to flow smoother and are easier to control. This also changes the coefficient of expansion of the material. So again, you're messing with sizing. And when you have everything this tightly packed, you're not able to just stretch the wall a little bit or move the cat a little bit. A single change in the first layer can change the dynamics of the cross hatching on the bottom of the cup, all the way to the pattern that is used at the top, depending on what the slicer is. Everything is so interconnected that this was a very challenging part to produce. But ultimately, we got there, and now this version of the joint locker is able to be mass-produced reliably enough to where an organization like Urban Outfitters is able to purchase these from another room at a wholesale cost and resell them profitably. It's an excellent example of a product that could have never existed before because injection molding couldn't create a cavity that has that same capability. Some people would comment, oh, you could put a slot down the back. No, you can't, that's not allowed with this design. It would mess up the aesthetics of the part. In order to keep this beautiful, minimalist look and aesthetic, we had to have total control of everything and have it completely enclosed. There were not additional features or traditional features that could be used. 3D printing was the only one that was able to use those types of grip fins and still have the variability to control it all. While there were tons of engineering decisions to create both the main part and its lid, it would take too long to go over all of them in this core video. The biggest benefit is that this 3D printed product was able to go from a prototype with a couple of 3D printers into professional production in less than a year and be of a quality to where a very major retailer was willing to use it. So. If you need a way to stash your herb, you might go over and check out another room and see the joint lockers that we've produced for them. And they have a nifty amount of 3D printing engineering behind them in order to create a product that was never possible before and is totally unique from what any other competition could ever possibly create. If you like that video and you want to see more real 3D printed products that have made it into the real world and are being mass produced, just check out this playlist over here. We've gone over a bunch of other products that actually exist in the real world and are sold in retail. You might also comment about other products that you know of because we're always looking for new stories about these things and leave us a like. Have a great day, everybody.